Welcome ARC Youth. This is our second message online together and this week we're going to go on a journey together. This journey won't involve us leaving our house because of course we're on lockdown but we're going to take a journey with the life of Jesus and we're going to journey through his final week on earth and we are going to have a look at the kind of week that Jesus went through uh, just before he goes to the cross. So I'd like us to look in our Bibles now, and if you've got your Bible with you, turn to Mark chapter 14 and verses 10 to 11. And so I'm going to read that to us. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. And they were delighted to hear this, and they promised to give him money so he watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over. Now here is Judas. Judas is one of the twelve disciples. And Judas, like all the other disciples, would have listened to the teachings of Jesus. He would have listened to the Sermon on the Mount. He would have listened to the parables. Judas would have witnessed the miracles that all the other disciples witnessed. He would have seen Jesus raising people from the dead. He would have seen the blind uh, regaining their sight, the lame beginning to walk again. But at some point, Judas decides that money is more important to him than anything else. And the question for us this morning is, what is really important to you? What is it that's really important to you? For Judas, the promise of money revealed where his focus really was, where his heart really was. And so he looks for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Now at this time of lockdown, when we're in unusual circumstances, what becomes really important to you at this time? Now I wonder if you've ever been betrayed by a friend. Friends are really important to us, to us, aren't they? You know, I want to ask you the question also, are you connecting to your friends at this time? Are you remembering to call them or to text them or to have a Zoom meeting with them? I wonder if you've ever been betrayed by a friend. You know, the pain of a close friend betraying you is one of the most devastating experiences. Jesus knows that pain. Jesus experienced the pain of a friend betraying him. And in this final week of Jesus' life, it is full of hardship and suffering for him. Jesus is somebody who understands real suffering. He goes through every experience of human suffering. And so we have one that when we pray to him, he understands the difficulties and the hardships that we are going through. So our journey continues and we're going towards now uh, to have a meal with Jesus. I want you to imagine that you're sitting down at the table and no one can see you, but you're there at the table at this last supper meal. And this meal is a special meal. It commemorates the Passover. Now the Passover is when the Jewish people remembered their, uh, those night of the Exodus when the angel of death passed over their houses and wherever he saw the blood on the lintels, he passed over their house. You know, for the Jewish people, they remember the events of their faith with meals. How special is that? Think about if every time we remembered something about Jesus, we sat down and created a meal about that event. Jesus and his disciples are sitting down to this meal. Imagine yourself seated at that table. And as they eat together, you know, they were in close friendship. They travelled a long way together. They were close friends having an important meal together. And often when we eat, we eat with people who are special to us and who we feel a deep connection to. 
At the table, Jesus makes a surprise announcement. Jesus makes a prophecy and he says these words, that one of you is going to betray me. Now Judas had already decided that he was that one to betray. And so all of the disciples are looking at each other, is it me, is it me? But Jesus takes the bread and then he breaks it. And then he takes the cup and he gives thanks for the bread and the cup. And this would be the last time that Jesus will do this with his disciples until he comes again in his kingdom. So what about us? Every so often we take communion in church, don't we? We take it fairly, fairly regularly. And do we stop to remember that this simple meal that Jesus gave us and what it really means? You know, ARC Youth, this Easter, we're going to be taking communion in our homes. We won't be able to meet together as a church, so we'll do what the early church did and break bread in our homes. I want you to stop and remember when you're seated together breaking bread that Jesus died for each one of us and that his body was broken for us and his blood was spilled for us. As we walk this week towards Easter, I encourage you, don't let the virus crowd out this important event in our faith. I want to give you three actions to do, ARC Youth, and I'd like you to tell me when you've done it. The first action is I want to encourage you, can you read the Holy Week in the Gospels? So if you go towards the end of your Gospels, uh, you will start to see the Holy Week unfolding. And, and could you read a portion a day towards Good Friday? The second action I'd like you to do is I'd like you to find a really great worship song that talks about Easter. Maybe you even have a favourite one. But can you play some great Easter worship music this week to remind yourself of this Easter story? And thirdly, can you contact a friend? Maybe it's a friend that you haven't spoken to for a long while. And maybe it would be good for you to just greet them again and tell them that you're thinking of them and praying for them. I want to encourage you, ARC Youth, to really think about this Easter. It's a very different Easter to how we've spent it before, but I pray that you will not forget these important events of our faith and what they mean.